look at the most searched word in the technology arena, generative AI. Ever since computers were invented, they've just been really glorified calculators, you know, machines that execute the exact instructions given to them by the programmers. But something incredible is happening now. Computers have started gaining the ability to learn and think and communicate just like we do. They can do creative intellectual work and that previously only human beings could not do. We call this generative AI. And you may have encountered it already through products like ChatGPT. Basically, intelligence is now available as a service, a kind of um, a giant brain floating in the sky that anyone can talk to. It's not perfect, but it's surprisingly capable and it's improving at an exponential rate. That is a big deal. It's going to affect just about every person and company on the planet positively or negatively. This video is here to help you understand what generative AI is all about in practical terms beyond the hype. The better you understand this technology as a person, better equipped you will be to survive and thrive in the age of AI. So AI is a silly but useful mental model for this. You know, imagine you have Hsteen in your basement. In fact, everyone does. And by Hsteen, I really mean the combination of every smart person who ever lived. You can talk to Hsteen whenever you want. He has instant access to the sum of all human knowledge and will answer anything you want within seconds, never running out of patience. He can also take on any role you want, a comedian, you know, a poet, a doctor, a coach, and will be an expert within that field. He has some human-like limitations, though. He can make mistakes, he can jump to conclusions, he can misunderstand you, but the biggest limitation is actually your imagination and your ability to communicate effectively with them. This skill is called prompt engineering and the word of AI, this is an essential, is as essential as reading and writing. Most people vastly underestimate what this Einstein can do in your basement. It's like going to the real Einstein and asking him to proofread a, a, a high school report or hiring a world class five star chef and having him shop onions. The more you interact with Einstein, the more you will discover surprising and powerful ways for him to help you or your company. Now, enough of all these rhetorics. Let's go into some things and clarify some terms. Oh, as you probably know, AI stands for artificial intelligence. You know, uh, machine learning and computer vision have been around for decades. Whenever you see a YouTube recommendation or a web search result, or whenever you get a credit card transaction that is approved, that is the AI the traditional AI in action. Generative AI is um, artificial intelligence that generates new original content rather than just finding or classifying existing content. That's the G in GPT. For example, large language models or LLMS, that's the short form, are a type of generative AI that can communicate using normal human language chat. Now, GBT is a product of the company OpenAI. It started as an LLMM, essentially an advanced chat box using the new architecture called the transformal architecture, which is by the way the T in the GPT. It is so fluent in human language that anyone can use it. You don't need to be an AI expert or programmer, and that's the kind of what triggered the real revolution. You know, so how does it work actually? Well, a large language model is an artificial neural network, basically a bunch of numbers or parameters that connected that are connected to each other, rather similar to how the brain works. For instance, let's say I wrote uh, dogs are when I sent that to a large language model that gets converted to numbers processed by the neural network and then resulting numbers are converted back into text. So in this case, the word animals are, I mean dogs are animals. So yeah, this is basically a text-to-text -text word machine. 
The interesting part is that if we take that input, I mean that output, and combine it with the input, send it through the model again, then it will continue adding new words. It will continue adding new words. So what does this new word do? That's what's going on behind the scene, basically. When you type something in ChatGPT in this case, for example, it generated a whole story. So how are these numbers set? I mean, if they are set manually, that would be impossible. But through training, just like babies learning to speak, you know, a baby isn't told how to speak. She doesn't even get an instructional manual. Instead, she listens to what people say around her. And when she's hard enough, she starts seeing the pattern. She speaks a few words at first to the delight of her parents and then later on full sentences. Similarly, during a training period, the language models is fed a mind-boggling amount of text to learn from, mostly from the internet sources. It then plays, it plays guess the next word with all of this over and over again and the parameters are automatically tracked until it starts getting really good at predicting the next word this is called back propagation which is the fancy term for oh i guess it wrong i can change something to what is better to become truly useful, a model also needs to undergo human training. This is called reinforcement learning. You know, with human feedback, and it involves thousands of hours of humans painstakingly testing and evaluating output from a model and giving feedback. You know, a kind of training a dog with a clicker to reinforce good behavior. That's why a model like GBT won't tell you how to rob a bank. It knows very well how to rob a bank, but through human training, it has learned that it shouldn't help people commit crimes. When training is done, the model is frozen. Frozen. Note that there are different types of generative AI models so, that generate different types of context. Some text to step models like GBT4, you take text as input and generate text as output. All right. You know, the text can be natural language, but it can also be structured information like code, JSON, HTML. It saves an incredible amount of time, and you can also learn a lot from the code it generates. Text to image models, you know, will generate images. They will describe your what you want, and images gets generated for you. And speech to text models. This can, can create voice transcriptions, which is useful for things like meeting notes. We have text to audio models. It can generate uh, music or sounds from a prompt. Even text to video models like Sora that generate videos from text from a prompt. Sooner or later, we have infinite movie series that auto generate the next episode tailored to your taste as you are watching. You know, kind of scary if you think about it one trend now is a uh, multimodal um ai products meaning they combine different um, models into one product so you can work with texts you can work with images you can work with audio without switching tools the charge gbt mobile app is a good example of this just for fun you know i took a, a photo of a room and i asked where i could hide stuff I kind of like uh, that it mentioned the stove, but one that it could get out there. So it's sensitive, it's aware. You know, initially, uh, language models were just word predictors. Statistically, machines with limited uh, practical use. But as they became larger and were trained on more data, it started gaining emergent capabilities. You know, expected capability that surprised even the de developers of this technology. They could replay, write poetry, um, write high quality code, discuss company strategy, uh, provide legal and medical advice, they could coach, teach, basically creative and intellectual things that only human could do previously, it turns out that when a model has seen enough text and images, you know, it starts to see patterns and understand higher level concepts, just like a baby learning to understand the world. 
Let's take for a, a simple example. I give GBT4 this little drawing that involves a string of pair of scissors, an egg, a pot, and a fryer. That what will happen if I use the scissors? That's the question. The model has most likely not been trained as this exact scenario, yet it gave a pretty good answer, which demonstrates a basic understanding of the nature of scissors, you know, egg, gravity and heat. I've noticed that people and companies tend to fall into different kind of mindsets, categories when it comes to AI. On the one side, we have denial, the belief that AI cannot do, cannot do my job or we don't have time to look into this technology. This is a dangerous place to be. A common saying is that AI might not take your job or people using AI will. And this is true for both individuals and company. On the other hand, of the scale, we have panic and then despair. The belief that AI is going to take my job no matter what. AI is going to make my company go bankrupt. Head out of these mindsets are helpful. So I propose a middle ground, a balanced positive mindset. AI is going to make me, my team, my company insanely productive. Personally, with the, this mindset, I feel like I've gained superpowers. I can go from idea to result in so much shorter time. I can focus more on what I want to achieve and less on the grunt work of building things. And I'm learning a lot faster too. Before we move too far, I think it's important I tell you that if you are not subscribed to this channel and you are here, the noble thing to do is to subscribe so that you get more of this video. Thank you.